Yes. Welcome, Cal Discoveries travelers and friends. We're going to liven things up today for our Cal Discoveries travel lecture series. I'm going to be interviewing uh, Dr. Steve Rusin, but first I'm Nancy McNeil, Assistant Director of Cal Discoveries Travel. I'm interviewing Dr. Steve Rusin, as I mentioned, who received his PhD in botany from UC Berkeley in 1984. But did you know? He currently directs the Biological Imaging Facility at UC Berkeley, which is an interdisciplinary core microscope facility at UC Berkeley's Department of Plant and Microbial, Microbial excuse me, Biology in the College of Natural Resources. Secondly, he is the curator of the Golub Collection of Antique Microscopes at UC Berkeley, which houses over 160 microscopes and books pertaining to the early history of mic microscopy. He was also featured on a KQED Quest 2009 program on the world's most powerful microscope. And he teaches one uh, UCB course currently, has a classical education in botany, and is knowledgeable about the natural history and biogeography of plants, especially those of tropical and subtropical regions around the world. Wow, lots of feathers in that cap of yours, Steve. Thank you. He has lectured for Cal Discoveries Travel since 2002 about the plant biogeography of Borneo, Patagonia, Australia, um, New Zealand, Vietnam, the Amazon, Namibia, and Madagascar. But let's start out first, Steve. I'm sure that our viewers today are going to wonder, what is my background today? What is my background? Oh, what is my? Oh, oh, your background. Well, your background, background is is uh, your background is perfect. This is um, is it the world's largest flower? It might be. It's a flower that's endemic to Borneo, and it's called Rafflesia. Uh, it's a giant flower. It's actually a multiple flower. It consists of a bunch of bunch of flower parts. It's pollinated by beetles. But when it was first discovered, uh, this story goes. There's always stories, right? When it was first discovered, there were elephant footprints around it, and so it had got the uh, got the mythology that it was elephant pollinated. And it turns out it's not, but it's a cool story. So the, the plant's called Rafflesia. And when we go back to Borneo, please, when we go back to Borneo, we've, I've, I've built into the trip a one day trek to find this flower. So one of the things I love to do, and I love to do this with the travelers too, is, is I sort of talk about what's really interesting there, wherever we go. And in Borneo, the interesting flower, of course, there, there's pitcher plants and so on, but the, but the really interesting flower is this one here in your background, which is Rafflesia. And so I built into the trip and we're gonna see if we can find this. When I was there the first time, um, the one, the last time, we didn't get a chance to see it and I was, I was distraught at this. So you get so close and then you don't see it. But uh, this time we're going to build it in and we have an entire day trekking around looking for this. And the guide, the local guides, of course, will know where it is and they'll find it. What's, what's uh, fortuitous, of course, is that it flowers twice a year. Mm. But one flowering period is September and that's when we're going to be in Borneo. So it's perfect. So we'll for sure see this flower. Oh, fantastic. And we'll mention the trip again later um, in the interview, Steve. But just perfect. for perspective... Looking at my head, how big is this flower? That's about the right size. <laughs> it's a huge flower. It can be two or three feet a meter across. It comes out of the ground. It's, a, it's an obligate parasite. So it parasitizes a local tree. And then when it, it, it's completely underground, uh, non-photosynthetic, so there's no green parts. All the green behind you are different plants, different things, right? But this plant, uh, parasitizes a local tree and when it flowers it brings out a bowling ball sized bud like this big it just kind of comes up out of the ground and then it unfolds and turns into the big plant that you see or the big flower you see in the background. Wow this is so exciting very exciting. 
Uh, let's go back just a little bit, Steve. Can you um, tell us what your association really has been with Cal and or the Cal Alumni Association? Well, with Cal... <laughs> Well, with Cal, I've been at Cal over 30 years. And so, in fact, I've been at Cal more than 40 years because I came here as a graduate student and I got my PhD here. Went away for a while and then came back and uh, started working in the lab and so on and so forth. And then fast forward to about 2001, I got a, an email from a friend who said, the California alumni is looking for lecturers for their travel program and would you be interested? And I'm like, well, first off, I didn't know they had a travel program. And secondly, yeah. And so, so what I had to do was be interviewed. And one of the interviewers was, was of course, Vince Resch. And so I went to visit Vince and, and we had a very pleasant conversation. And then it just sort of snowballed. And then in 2002, as you mentioned at the beginning, I did my first trip and I was so nervous, I swore I would never do another one. Because the, the trip was uh, the Holland Belgium trip, which I love. I've been back, I think, three other times. Um, and it was lecturing to 120 people and on and on and on. And I don't have trouble giving lectures, but this was a different thing. And so um, I did that trip, but I fell in love with these trips. and. Uh, that was my first one, the Holland Belgium. And so, as I said, I've done that a few times and, and since 2002. And then it just kept going. You kept asking me back and I kept saying, great, I'd love to. And so then um, I became like uh, the plant person because I love plants and especially the tropical, the interesting plants. And so, as I said, I've done a number of these trips and I just sort of keep doing them. I've done as many as two a year, and that's a little rough on me, but um, for sure, one a year is perfectly fine. Well, I know that our travelers, because of our uh, evaluations that we take after each one of the trips, absolutely love traveling with you for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is how friendly you are and engaging, but all of this wonderful knowledge and information that you share with our travelers. So we really, really appreciate you, you. Uh, lecturing for us on trips. But I know that you've had lots of unexpected, many humorous, memorable experiences on your trips. Can you share maybe just one of your favorite? One. <laughs> well, um, I could do a, well, there's, so, so one thing that I do with this really fun is I, is I find what's interesting in the plant world around us, wherever we are. And I take, I take the groups out into the, into the jungles or into the desert or wherever it is and we talk about plants and so on. And one time in uh, Australia, we had a, a change of the itinerary. And so my original plan was to walk with the group on this island and take them on this trail and show them all the wonderful tropical and subtropical plants, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that changed and, and we were no longer because of the weather, we weren't allowed to go to that island. So instead we went to another island and, and the other island was a private island, but they let, us, they let us get off and do our thing and walk around. But the group wanted a, a, a walk through the jungle. So instead of walking through the jungle, what we did is we took, my wife and I call this our walk to the dumpster. And so we walked on this little road that, that sort of paralleled the shore, but it was beautifully I mean, there were so many wonderful plants and the group was really, was, they just rolled with it. They were really fun. And, and we were walking and we finally made it to the dumpster and there were plants growing on the dumpster. And so I gave a little lecture on the ferns that were growing on the dumpster. So that, that's forever, at least for me and my wife, that's known as my walk to the dumpster in Australia. <laughs> that was, and you know, the, the group is really great because I, and this is why I love traveling so much with Cal alumni is that the alums are, are, they're really professional travelers and they just roll with the punches. And, you know, they, they, you know, when itinerary changes, they're like, whatever. And you want to walk to the dumpster. Great, Steve, this will be fun. And so, you know, they're, they're really fun to, to, to be with because they're so flexible. And, but that was my walk to the dumpster. To the dumpster. Oh, yes. great. Well, thanks for sharing that one with us. I'm sure that you have more than one favorite trip. Wow. Can you narrow it down to one? Um, 
So for me personally, uh, my favorite trips are the trips where I see these most famous plants. And so if you're a plant person, and I'll give you an example of the, of the Namibia trip. If you're a plant person, you have a life list of plants that you would like to see, that you've read about, that you've studied, they're in every book, um, that are just almost mythical plants. And the number one plant, the number one is called Welwitchia. And this is a plant that only grows in Namibia and a little bit in Somalia. It just on the southeastern, uh, southwestern shores of Africa. And so when I had a chance to go to Namibia, I jumped at this chance. And so um, this is one of the, my top favorite trips because first off, Namibia is just so fantastically beautiful. It's just so remote. But when I was on the trip, I decided to give a talk, of course, on Welwitchia. And, and when I, and I discovered, here's another story, but I discovered that our itinerary was not going to go by the Welwitchia areas and I just would not have this. And so, so after, so I gave this, this quite, um, uh, sort of upbeat talk on this plant. And I, I convinced the group that their lives would change if they saw this plant. And so we unanimously voted instead of to, to go and have wine and cheese on a boat, we decided to take this kind of arduous bus trip to go to these plants. And, and we found these plants and we went out in the, in the wild and we looked at these incredible plants that you'll never see anywhere on earth. And the group unanimously said after that it did, it changed their life. And so, so that is one of my favorite trips because of that plant. And the one plant in the background, that was my favorite trip too, uh, especially it will be one of my faves when we see Rafflesia in the background. So for me, that's why, to find these things that are either rare or famous or both. And, and that's what I like about these trips. And I try to, imp to impress on kind of the cool factor of seeing this to the group. And, and they always, they, they, they tend to really like it, you know, they go with it. Well, you kind of convince people that this is something that they must see, and it sounds like they're they're all very happy that they they followed your uh, your directions in that case. And I know it happened in Madagascar. I think I remember on that trip, you found some kind of a, a, of a plant that you wanted to see. Well, in Madagascar, the famous trip is the bao our famous plant is the baobab, and and. In Madagascar, there are five species of baobabs and Madagascar has four of them. And so wow. that was another thing that, that, and I sort of played up this tree and it's a, the, the largest baobabs are quite fantastic trees, um, incredibly so. They're, they're, they're huge trees that look like an upside down broccoli. And so, so you know, we, we went out of our way to find those trees as well. And once again, you know, you play it up if you explain to people, you know, most people don't understand plants. They're just things in the way, you know? And so one thing that I really try to do is explain to people how plants are just so fantastic on their own right. And then you find these cool plants like the baobabs in Madagascar or the, or the well witch in Namibia. And so, so yeah, so in Madagascar, we did find those, we found um, four out of the five species of baobabs in Madagascar. Oh, fantastic. That, this is a really good segue into asking you what topics, how do you decide what topics you're going to talk about in your lectures and your discussions while you're well, on the trip? Well, I guess people don't, don't realize how much we lecturers, at least for me, for sure, um, prepare for these trips. I will spend three to six months preparing for a trip. And, you know, I've as, as I do more and more trips, I, I have to prepare less. And so it's more like three months instead of six. But, but what I'll do is, is see what's interesting and what's unique for the area we're going to, right? And so Rafflesia and Borneo, uh, uh, well, which in Namibia. And so, so I look at the big picture of the plant biogeography so I always give three lectures, at least, sometimes more, but I look at the big picture of the plant biogeography and I, I, I then pare it down because there's so much there. You know, we went, I went to uh, Costa Rica and Costa Rica is overwhelming, mm -hmm. just overwhelming with plants. Just, it's unbelievable. And so I made a little bit of mistake in Costa Rica where I was so enthusiastic about the plants, I kind of like 
oh, went overboard on the plants. And so I dialed it down. But mostly what I'll do is I look at the area, figure out what's interesting, and then I'll write a sort of a generic plant biogeography lecture and discuss, explain to the people why these plants are here and how they exist there. And then I'll pick one or two plants to make sort of a, another lecture that's more interesting of just the, the, the whole biology of this one particular plant. It's all very light, not too heavy, um, but that's what I do. So I look at different areas and try to figure out what's interesting in those areas. Every part of the world has something almost unique. De depending on where you go, you'll find one or two plants, maybe more sometimes, that just are, you just don't find anywhere else. And so if that's the case, then I will, I will play those up and explain how cool it is that we're here seeing this and touching this plant rather than just reading about it in a book. Because right. Yes. Well, you know, I really thank you for sharing with all of us about the amount of time and preparation our lecturers spend before yeah. a trip, because this is true of not only you, Steve, oh, yeah. but of the other lecturers that I'm in touch with, interview with, and converse with, and I find that this is what they all say, that it's a three to six month process of preparing. And the travelers come back just absolutely thrilled to pieces that our lecturers have provided this kind of strong educational component in the trips. Well, I try really hard to do that, to make, as I said, not make it, I mean, they're not in school, you know, and so I don't, I try not to make it really hard or heavy. And, you know, you have to be, I mean, I'm just sort of, I like entertaining anyway. I mean, I do this with my classes here at Berkeley. You have to, you know, to keep them awake, but, but I try to make it light, but interesting. You know, the other thing about giving these lectures that's makes it a little bit nerve wracking sometimes is, is depending on where you go in the world, there are different levels of technology. And sometimes you, you know, and as, as, as we get more and more into the, in, into this era, the technology changes as well. So you have to be prepared to give lectures on the fly, which is what I really love to do, or to give a PowerPoint type lecture, which is, I do, but it's my less, you know, my least favorite. And so you have to be flexible in being able to lecture and discuss and answer questions sort of whenever you, well, I mean, whenever you're awake, basically, you know, because we're on all the time. And, and this is the, one of the things that I really like about it is that I want to make it so that when we go on these trips, the people feel comfortable and they, to ask me questions. And I'm always up for answering questions, always. And, just Thank you. Some, yeah, thanks for sharing all of that, Steve. Um, and, and therefore, based on what we've been talking about and you've been sharing with us, we know that Cal Discovery's travel sets itself apart from other educational tours by connecting the excellence of Berkeley through distinguished faculty lectures, such as yourself, with the pleasure of travel to see some of the most iconic places and or flowers, plants, in your case, in the world. Where are you looking forward to going to next and why? Well, my next trip is Borneo, and that's a year from now, a whole year from now. But, and, and as I said at the beginning, that I'm very much looking forward to that. I went back and I think I was there in, in two, hold on here. I hate being interrupted. So um, I went there in, I think, 2009, the first time, and the minute I left, I wanted to go back because it's such a famous, such a fantastic place. Um, you know, you have to talk about the destruction of the rainforest and so on and so forth. And we want to see these before they're, before they're gone and help people sort of maintain them. And so I really want to go back to Borneo, as, as I said earlier, to find this plant, to bring travelers there, to show them the you know, the, the unspoiled, the virgin rainforest and so on and so forth. So that's like, I mean, there's so many places in the world to go. Uh, so many places. Anyway, that's what, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to right now. That's next. Well, wonderful. Thanks for that. And, and I will mention to our viewers that this was a trip that was uh, scheduled for this year, but it was postponed. And so we are hoping that um, the world opens up to travel by next September, Steve, so that we can um, definitely get you and the travelers to Borneo. Well, 
Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, for giving us such an interesting insight into your life as a researcher and a professor and as a lecturer for Cal Discoveries Travel. Uh, for those viewing, please visit our website at alumni.berkeley.edu forward slash travel, where you can see all of our incredibly diverse 2021 program lineup and hopefully find a trip that's calling you. And as Steve has said and mentioned, he is scheduled to lecture on our Borneo trip. The dates are September 1st to the 21st of 2021. Thanks for tuning in, watching, and go Bears! Go Bears. Thanks very much, Nancy. <laughs>